Okay, da haben wir jetzt den Digitalrekorder. Der Daison ist dieses linke Eck, das drama so her. Und da ist Oder heute? Halt. Na, das ist fest. Dann müsste es andersrum hier. Oder so her. Und das da auch andersrum. Na, das stimmt nicht. Vielleicht so. Da kommt das da her. Oder? Looks like there's a small piece of it missing. You know that shard we found wedged in the gun at the crime scene. I think it just might fit in this gap. Let's try it. Ach so, das klingt rum da. Yes. A perfect fit. Ray, where are we now with Molina's case? I read Sergeant Lip's statement. Well, Sergeant Lip isn't telling us the whole truth. How do you know? We recovered a gun at the crime scene. And wedged in the slide, we found a broken piece of the unit which records all the surveillance footage. Now, not only was that shard stuck in the gun, but it was also underneath some blood. Blood which turns out to belong to our very own Sergeant Lip. It means that little piece of plastic was in there before Sergeant Lip was struck in the head. But according to Sergeant Lip, the assailant entered, presented him with ID, and then when this sergeant turned his back, the assailant knocked him out. You think he would have noticed the assailant smashing up surveillance equipment before he got knocked out? You'd think so. You'd also think Sergeant Lip wouldn't turn his back on a guy like that, that maybe he'd even draw his own weapon. But for some reason, that's not how it went down. Hello there, it's Doc Robbins down in the morgue. I've finished the autopsy on Manuel Molinas. So whenever you're ready, I'm available to review my findings with you. Ja, Robbins hat wieder seine Autopsie abgeschlossen. Und da werden wir jetzt mal abschauen. Und wir lassen uns mal erzählen, wo sie so gefunden hat. Nice to see you. How can I help? I found two bullet wounds, both potentially fatal, and both were consistent with the damage you'd expect from a small caliber hollow point. One bullet penetrated his heart practically dead center. It severed the pulmonary and aortic valves and lodged in the ventricular wall. That alone would have killed him. However, I also found what I believe was the first shot. It penetrated the frontal bone of his cranium, just above the glabella. Bullet obliterated his brain tissue in an expanding channel from the entrance wound. It then bounced off the back of his skull and continued its path of destruction until it came to rest in the cerebellum. Death was quick, if not painless. Well, this wasn't a mercy killing. One to the head, one to the heart, usually suggests a professional killer. Neither slug was particularly difficult to extract. Here they are. Absolutely. I have a sample ready for you. Here. I found a glob of what looks like mucus on the victim's face. I collected some for you. Someone spat on his face? That's what it looks like. You see, the uh, less viscous bits appeared to flow down the side of his face. So unless he was already lying on the floor when he was shot, it occurred post-mortem. Anytime. Okay, we have wieder einige Sachen gekriegt, die werden wir dann gleich mal untersuchen und zwar zum einen wieder den abproben Spucke von Leichnam des Opfers gut das ist schon überprüft worden, das ist die DNA von Molines
Und da haben wir was gefunden. Und das werden wir jetzt gleich mal überprüfen. Gut, das passt nicht. Okay, das muss... Na, das passt überhaupt nicht. Das muss die falsche sein. Nehmen wir mal die dritte. Das einzige noch. Das kann dann auch unmöglich stimmen. Heute das stimmt nicht. Das muss so her. Dann muss das da, da her. Das da hier und das da auch hier. Und das stimmt jetzt. Abgleich. Beatrice Salazar. She spat on Molinas' corpse. I wonder if that was a message for him or for us. Catherine, you need to see this. Is this right? You found Beatrice Salazar's DNA in the cell. She shot Molina's and spat on his face. Well, she wasn't about to have him try to testify against her, that's for sure. But why would she risk trying to kill him herself? That doesn't make sense. Unless, of course, she also held him responsible for having to kill her own son. But even under normal circumstances, this would have been a suicide mission. Not a lot of guys are crazy enough to do something like that. Even the ones that work for her. I think she's crazy enough now to do just about anything. Well, that may be true, but maybe she wasn't taking as much of a risk as we think. Sergeant Lip described the assailant as a tall Hispanic male posing as an FBI agent. What do you really think the chances are that Beatrice Salazar has become a master of disguise? I think we need to be very careful if you're suggesting Sergeant Litt may be involved here. I realize we have evidence that contradicts the Sergeant's initial statement, but if we're going to pursue this, then we better make damn sure our evidence is unimpeachable. Keep me in the loop, Ray. So, we have a Beschluss. For what? Halt, Moment, wir haben ja noch die Kugeln. Das sind die aus dem Kopf. Können wir die irgendwie untersuchen genauer? Nix. Und das ist die aus dem Körper. So, vielleicht können wir die vergleichen, ob die aus der gleichen Knarre stammen. So. Das ist die Kugel aus der Pistole, die wir vom Gefängnis gefunden haben. It's confirmed. The gun from the crime scene is the murder weapon. Both bullets taken from the victim were fired from the same gun. Okay, die Kugeln stammen also aus der Waffe, die wir gefunden haben. Nur wer hat es benutzt? Euch oh, spricht bisher gegen Beatrice Salazar. Aber wer weiß, wer, ob äh, Sergeant Lipp noch irgendwas damit zum Tor hat. Jim, we've uncovered evidence which substantially contradicts Sergeant Lipp's account of the shooting. What evidence? What are you talking about? 
The guy was viciously attacked. His skull was almost busted in. I mean, it's not like he's gonna have some photographic memory of exactly what happened. Wir haben nämlich the surveillance unit was smashed before Lip was knocked out. Okay, we should clear this up with him. But I won't let it become a fishing expedition. You understand? So, What's going on here, Captain? Just a few follow-up questions, Tim. We just need to document everything for the record. Was it some song hot? No, like I said, tall, Hispanic male, wearing a business suit, approached me, showed me an FBI badge, an ID. Look, do you need me to sit with a sketch artist? I can do that if it'll help. A phantom build? That doesn't prove a damn thing. Pardon me, was that the evidence you meant to talk about? They teach you CSI as some kind of weirdo advanced interrogation techniques? Because that don't make a lick of sense. That's not what we meant at all. Try using the evidence that supports our accusation. We found Beatrice Salazar's DNA on Manuel Molinez's corpse. Beatrice Salazar? What are you talking about? Are you familiar with Beatrice Salazar? I'm familiar with the FBI's most wanted list. Are you sure you never saw Miss Salazar? I told you what I saw. I guess it's possible she came in after I was out cold. Tim, according to your statement, the assailant entered the jail, offered you an FBI ID, and when you turned around to process it, he struck you over the back of the head, rendering you unconscious. Is that correct? Yes, it is. It went down pretty fast. Das stimmt natürlich wieder der Nick, denn wir haben da vorne einen Splitter gefunden, der vor dem Niederschlag schon drin war. You see this little piece of plastic? It comes from that unit which records all the footage from the surveillance cameras. We found it stuck inside the slide of the gun that struck you. Problem is, we found your blood on top of it, not underneath as you'd expect if your statement were accurate. It looks as though the DVR was struck before you were. It, uh, uh, I don't know how that could have happened. Wait, couldn't he have hit me more than once, like, after I was out? If you were struck more than once, we should be able to tell from the pattern of the bruising. I don't know about that. I've had about enough of people touching my head today. Sergeant Lip, let's not make this more complicated than it needs to be. If necessary, I'll get a warrant. Damn it. Okay, do what you have to do. This won't hurt at all. My partner just needs to take a picture. What's we machen a photo? Oh, der schaut ja übel aus, oder? And that's it. Like I said, painless. Yeah, thanks. Okay, was drehen wir jetzt? There was nix you know the drill, Sergeant. I want to be able to find you when we need you again. Yeah, sure. I'm not going anywhere. Okay, that song, wir schauen uns diesen mal im Labor an. Aber wo? Im, Lab, uh, Im Mikroskop vielleicht? Nick, gut. Oder vielleicht am Tisch. Heute ist war nicht der Tisch. Ach so. I only see evidence of a single wound. The bruising on Sergeant Lip's head is a perfect match to the shape of the murder weapon. That little divot there is right where the DVR shard was, and those ovals are consistent with the finger placement of someone holding the gun by the grip. There's something strange about the angle, though. The gun was upside down. To strike someone with a gun while you're holding it by the grip, you're either hitting with the butt, like a hammer, or with the side of the gun, like you're swinging a haymaker punch or slapping someone. If Sergeant Lip was struck from behind like he says he was, then the gun would be right side up. 
Sergeant Lip did this to himself. Okay, er ist also nur vor mir geschlungen worden. Aber irgendwo ist es an der Sache schon wieder faul. Deswegen reden wir nochmal mit ihm. That's right. I had my back turned and he hit me in the back of the head. So, das stimmt natürlich wieder nicht. Here's the problem, Tim. You see those oval patterns right there? They indicate the gun that hit you was held by the grip. And if you were hit from behind, like you said, well then the gun should be right side up. And it's not. Yeah, sure, the first time he hit me, but what about after I was out? He could have hit me again, right? Maybe he wasn't just trying to knock me out, he may have been trying to kill me. There's no physical evidence you were hit more than once, Tim. And let's say for the sake of argument you were hit twice. Right on the exact same spot on the back of your head. It still doesn't explain why the gun was upside down. You staged your injury, didn't you, Sergeant? You're in Salazar's pocket. And you used your position as duty sergeant to arrange to be alone with Molina's. Then you let Salazar in there. And let's be generous here. Let's just say she's the one who actually pulled the trigger. And then the good little soldier you are, you cleaned up after her, didn't you? You make me sick. And you know what? I hope there's a special place in hell for dirt like you, because I know there's a special place in prison. It, it wasn't like that. I mean, I mean, look, you gotta understand, I'm in way over my head here. You're right. It was a setup. After Molinez was booked, I got a call. Same call I always got. If Salazar needed something from me. This time, the, the voice on the other end of the line is telling me to keep my eye on Molinez. Turns out I don't need to look very hard, because the sheriff calls me almost immediately with the order to have Molinez moved out to Pendleton and transferred to federal custody. So I call my contact back, give him the tip, Then he starts asking me to describe the Pendleton facility and the security detail handling the transfer, and that's when I realize Salazar is going to take Molinez out. I decide to assign myself the transfer just so nobody else gets hurt. How very noble of you, Tim. Look, I'm not proud of what I did. This is all way beyond anything I've had to do for Salazar before. Usually it's just about providing certain information now and then. I can't. You can't. Or you won't. I wasn't there. All I did was unlock the door and then I got the hell out of there. Why do I find that so hard to believe? You gotta believe me. See, this is what happened. I got this phone call from my brother-in-law. Swear to God, he works for Salazar too. He says Salazar's gone off the deep end. She's getting the hell out of town, but before she does, she's totally cleaning house. And she's not leaving any loose ends, including me. Was that supposed to make us feel sorry for you? I had no choice! You're a cop, damn it. Well, not anymore. Come on, we're talking about my sister and her kids here, all right? Salazar was gonna kill him if I didn't help her. Don't you get it? When she finds out I'm in custody, she's gonna kill him anyway. What's your sister's address? What's her address? Come on, we don't have much time. I don't know where they are. That's the point. Salazar has them? No. Her husband, m my brother-in-law, he hid them someplace. I don't know where. I can't reach him. I haven't been able to reach him since he called to tell me Salazar was cutting bait. I think Salazar may have gotten to him. And if she did, my sister and her kids, they're dead. There's nothing more you can do. They're dead. Okay, so who's your brother-in-law? He works for the FBI. Special Agent Huntby. Gene. My brother-in-law is Gene Huntby. Nice work, guys. Just got off the phone with the DA. Sergeant Lip is going to be charged as an accessory to murder. Was Brass able to locate Lip's sister? Not yet. He gave us Sergeant Lip's cell phone number and an attorney general's waiver. Lip's been in contact with his brother-in-law, Huntby, within the last 24 hours. So, Brass is hoping we'll be able to find Huntby before it's too late for his wife and kids. We know Huntby's last cell phone call to his brother-in-law pinged a cell tower over in North Las Vegas. Brass has his guys checking hotels in the area, but so far, nothing. I can't tell you how bad I want to take down Huntby. But making sure his wife and kids are safe is now our number one priority. The key to finding the family is finding Huntby. So track him down. 
I know if anybody can do it, you can. Keep me informed. Okay, und jetzt werden wir mal eine kleine Pause legen. Wir haben gerade da ein Handy gekriegt. Das werden wir dann bei der nächsten Aufnahme untersuchen.